Hello, this is Dr. Taylor, and in our previous video, we began to talk about the idea of significant figures. And I reminded you there's three different areas where you are going to apply the concept of significant figures in this course. One is in recording a number, um, so a measured number, how would you record it based on the situation? And if you recall, I said you record all certain digit plus one uncertain digit. And what you record does tell you how precise a measurement is, okay? So let's just escape this screen for a minute and give an example of that. So I'm gonna go here and we're looking at a graduated cylinder and the person's looking at eye level. And at eye level, um, to avoid something called parallax error, they are measuring at the bottom of what we call this meniscus. And that's pretty common when you have water, it sticks to the walls of the glass graduated cylinder. Now, how would you record this measurement? Now, assuming that these are in measured uh, milliliters, we have a number between 30 and 40 milliliters. Um, and then we have markings. The markings themselves if it's between 30 and 40 and there are 10 markings, so those each represent um, a one's place, right? So if we go to the line that's halfway between a 30 and 40, that would be a 35, so we know it's not that, and then there's one more line, so we know for sure it's at least 36 milliliters, but here's the catch right here. We have a guessing number or a number that we're going to be uncertain of. So we would include that additional number, uh, but we would um, be aware when we wrote it down, that was our uncertain digit. So we put all certain. So we are at least certain that this is gonna be 36 milliliters. And then we add one more place, which is our guess. And we say that's about halfway. Okay. so this last digit, this five, when you record it, you've expressed to the person um, who's reading it that that is your uncertain digit, but you know it's at least 36. It could be 36.6. Um, it really depends on a subjective um, measurement. So in graduated glassware, graduated uh, measuring devices, it's always gonna be one more uh, decimal place relative to the smallest measurement on the device. Um, so even if it were right on the line of 36 um, milliliters, we would still write 36.0 because our eyes only are capable of estimating if it's exactly on that line. I mean, certainly we can see if it's between lines, but we could only say, hey, we think it's on that line. So we're going to say 36.0 because the point zero is uncertain. Okay, so that would have a certain number of uh, significant figures and a certain amount of precision. Okay, so that was the one situation where you're measuring a number and you're expressing how precise the number is. And then we went to um, counting significant figures and I went through the rules there. And now we're going to uh, look at the rules associated with manipulation of those measured numbers, okay? So as you perform different mathematical um, operations on the numbers of the that you collected in the lab, you begin to have to propagate some error. So we apply these different rules depending on whether it's a multiplication division or addition or subtraction. Okay, so in multiplication and division, that's fairly straightforward. In multiplication and division, we're looking at the answer being the same number of significant figures as the multiplier or divisor, um, the smallest one of those, okay? So if the smallest multiplier or divide, divisor has three significant figures, then our answer would be three significant figures, okay? However, in addition and subtraction, we're looking at decimal places, okay? So in addition and subtraction, um, the measurement with the least number of decimal places determines the decimal places in the answer, okay? So sometimes these two are mixed together, and so you would apply them um, 
consecutively, depending on the order of operations, and then uh, keep track as you go along uh, which one of these rules you would use. So we'll go through some examples, okay? So here's one example where it says complete the following and report the value with the correct number of significant figures. Well, you have an addition in the first um, example, and if you add 26.05 and 32.1, you're gonna get what? 58.15. But if you were to stop there, you would have to stop at the point rounding to the point two. Uh, but you don't want to round too early. You just want to keep in mind that the answer to that particular um, addition is only going to have one decimal place because of the rule for addition. So as a result, the answer would be, if we stop there, reported to three significant figures. Now looking at the other one, we have addition again, and the second number, 7.7, .7, is in the tenths place, like the example before it. Okay, so when I add those uh, numbers together, I'm going to get 7.7, .7, and then I'm adding these additional numbers, uh, 0, 3, 2, to that. But those numbers aren't going to matter because in terms of what I'm going to um, answer, if that were my only um, answer, is the 7.7 .7 because the least number of decimal places is the tenths place and that 0, 3, 2 after it will make no difference. Okay, but we're going to keep those numbers in order to put it in the calculator and realize that my second quantity there that I'm adding only has two significant figures in it. So because the last operation is division, my answer will only have two significant figures. OK, um, so this is the way they're going about it here. Um, 26.05 and 32.1. See how they line those up? 58.2 would be the answer if we stop there. So we're putting in blue what would be where we stop if we stop there. And that's three significant figures. And the other addition is two significant figures. Because like I said, the other number doesn't matter because the most precision we can get is the tenth place. All right, and then we know we're going to do a division. So we apply the division rule, and that's going to give us only two significant figures in our answer. Okay, and so our final answer is only going to be 7.5, whatever units they are. It's obviously a measured number. We don't know what the units are because they didn't tell us. Anyhow, our answer is going to be in... Um, two significant figures, 7.5, okay? So remember, when you're dealing with significant figures, you need to know three things. How to record the proper number or the proper precision of your measurement based upon all certain and one uncertain place. How to count measured numbers, the number of significant figures in measured numbers. And then how to apply the rules for multiplication and division of the measured numbers. Um, and then you'll have questions on all of that. I know you're excited about that. Okay, so there are a couple extra um, uh, examples here. Uh, for, for example, if you've just got multiplication and division, um, it, you only need to worry about the two significant figures because the least number of sig figs gives you your answer. Um, so you have available to you these PowerPoints, and I suggest that you go through those. But for now, we're moving on to dimensional analysis.